You know, in my days covering sports, one of the most sobering moments came at an NFL Hall of Fame weekend, entering a banquet hall filled with retired football legends in obvious pain. It is stunning to see these demigods of Sunday's past shake hands with mangled fingers and shuffle on gimpy knees. But back then, few realized that the most devastating scars were behind many of those famous faces. Countless concussions led to an historic settlement today, with the NFL expected to pay out over three quarters of a billion dollars to brain-damaged players. But is it enough? And is the true toll of those crowd-pleasing hits hidden by this deal? Here's ABC's Dan Harris. Well, tonight, people are feverishly debating the settlement of a case that could have threatened the very existence of America's secular religion. We don't get any disclosure. I think it'll go a long way with former players and even current players. People believe this is a win for the NFL owners. And arguing about whether attorneys for the former players made a big mistake by settling for a, quote, pittance, let's set aside the analysis for a moment and get to the heart of the matter. A play with pain. Remember Jim McMahon, the brash quarterback who took the Chicago Bears to the Super Bowl in 1986? He wore sunglasses, had spiky hair, mouthed off to league officials. You guys watch the damn film. And even once mooned a news camera in a helicopter flying over practice. I was just scratching myself. This is Jim McMahon today. He's in his mid-50s, and he's got early-stage dementia. The guys will leave me a message, and I'll, I'll erase the message, thinking I'll call them right back, and then I forget who just called me. McMahon is one of 4,500 former players who sued the NFL, arguing they have injuries related to on-field concussions. Look at this video. According to ESPN Sports Science, Big blows like this can be the equivalent of taking a sledgehammer to the head. Also involved in this lawsuit, families of players like Junior Seau, who committed suicide and was later found to have a brain disease called CTE, which has been linked to concussions. His family says Seau changed dramatically toward the end of his life. And a lot of things towards the end of his life, patterns that we saw and things that worried us. His decision-making and his, his ambition decreased. He would sometimes lose his temper. He would get irritable over very small things, kind of go off the grid for a couple weeks. The man lived for family. That love was so important to him. So for him to take his own life, I can't imagine how severe his anguish was. Attorneys for the former players argued the league, which markets its hard hits to avid fans, deliberately covered up the dangers to keep its players on the field and protect its image, a charge Jim McMahon agrees with. They knew about it, and they didn't tell us. You know, that's just like flat out lying to you, you know, just looking you in the face and lying to you. And that allegation is a big part of why today's settlement is so controversial. The NFL, which is admitting no wrongdoing here, will not have to open its files and won't be forced to explain things like its so-called mild traumatic brain injury committee, which was led not by a brain doctor, but by a rheumatologist. I think there's no question that it's a win for the league, obviously, because um, they don't have to face the prospect of, of, uh, of really getting down and dirty in court and dealing with documents and dealing with what did they know and when did they know it. Late today, I sat down with Christopher Seeger, the attorney who settled this case. In your court filings, you wrote, the NFL glorified the hyperviolent collisions most likely to lead to head trauma and orchestrated a disinformation campaign to conceal the resulting brain injuries. So by settling, have you let them off the hook? No, unless somebody thinks paying $760 million is letting somebody off the hook, then by that definition, yeah, but we didn't. $760 million is real money. It's gonna be used immediately to, to care for the players who are most injured and to get medical testing and treatment for uh, the large percentage of the group. So we think we did something pretty amazing. But the size of the settlement is also part of why it is so controversial. You're talking about $765 million. Um, when you split that amongst the, the teams, you end up with about $24 million a team. Um, this is a $10 billion industry. Could you have settled for more, potentially? I don't think so. I think we got every nickel out of the NFL we were going to get with the facts we had, with the litigation we had, and, and the situation. Now, look, I've sued GE. That's a money-making machine, and I don't get all their profits. So it's not always the case when you sue a defendant that you get all their money. We got the money we needed to settle the case, and we're satisfied with it. 
Here is how the settlement, which still needs to be approved by a judge, will work. The league's 19,000 former players will all be eligible for a medical exam. Those with cognitive impairments will get further testing and treatment, and those with serious illnesses will get up to $5 million. A godsend, says former running back Kevin Turner, a 44-year-old hobbled by ALS. You can get on with treating your problem and not worrying about, you know, having the money. Late today, we caught up with Jim McMahon, who agrees. He says getting money now for the injured is worth the trade-off of not forcing the NFL to open up its files. These guys have been suffering for a long time, uh, both financially and mentally, and uh, you know now it's going to be, you know, hopefully bring, bring some relief to those families. There is one more important issue that critics are raising. Today's settlement does not include anything to force the NFL, which has made some safety changes in recent years to reduce concussions, to make any new changes going forward at a time when the players keep getting bigger and the hits keep getting harder. This is maybe a soul-searching moment for every fan. Yeah, I think it's a social issue in our society. We like violence. I mean, that's the bottom line. We pay for violence. We like the UFC. We like boxing. We like really rough sports. We love football. Football surpassed basketball, and it surpassed baseball, and it's because of the hitting. While some are declaring today a clear win for the NFL, experts we spoke with say this settlement has raised awareness about a lingering issue that is not going away for the NFL or for college teams, high school, and Pop Warner. So next week at kickoff, perhaps fans will pause just for a moment and reflect on the real price of those hits that so many of us love. For Nightline, this is Dan Harris in New York. Thanks, Dan. And who wins in this settlement? What do you think? Tweet us your thoughts at, at Nightline or at Bill Weir, ABC.